This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, March the 4th, 2019. It's the only day of the year that's a complete sentence in English, which is appropriate given that it's also National Grammar Day. At least if you're a fan of Martha Brockenbro, who in 2008 is the founder of the Society for the Promotion of Good Grammar, established National Grammar Day to encourage Americans not to give in to the temptations of using bad grammar in writing or in speech. So make a promise to yourself today to not split infinitives, to use commas liberally, and not to use there when you mean there, or your when you mean your, and to remember that it's only gets an apostrophe when it's a contraction. For those from another culture trying to learn the mess that is modern English, God bless you and have mercy on your soul. Today is the feast of St. Casimir. He was a Polish prince who at the age of 13 was a pawn in a series of failed political actions, one of which tried to put him on the Hungarian throne. He was thankful when these actions fizzled and he could return to a simple life of prayer and study. His joy was always visiting the poor and feeding them. He was acknowledged as a saintly young man by everyone around and he died young almost certainly from tuberculosis, which he caught caring for folks in the streets. He died in 1484, and many miracles were attributed to his tomb at the cathedral at Vilnius in modern-day Lithuania. He was canonized in 1521, but he was unknown outside of Poland, mostly because of the nascent Protestant revolt. In 1602, Pope Clement VIII reconfirmed his status as a saint and made him the patron of Lithuania. Many churches and cathedrals in Poland and Lithuania are named for St. Casimir, and in 1908, in the United States, a religious order was founded as the Sisters of St. Casimir in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which ministered almost exclusively to Lithuanian immigrants. Finally today, in 1789, in New York City, the first Congress of the United States met, putting the United States Constitution formally into effect. It was in the course of that Congress that the Bill of Rights was proposed for ratification. The original governing document of the United States, of course, was the Articles of Confederation, which failed in a series of very specific ways. It was mostly the work of James Madison and his extensive research into the government of Athens, the glorious revolutions of England, the French Revolution, the social contract writings of John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and the foundational political thought of both Plato's Republic and Aristotle's politics that framed the Constitution as a very different text from the Articles of Confederation. The most significant difference being that the Articles were intended to govern fundamentally autonomous nation-states who shared an ideal, but which were basically independent of one another. Modern folks might look at the European Union and see echoes of the Articles of Confederation. The Constitution, though, made one nation with fundamentally non-independent states who form a layer of governance between the local and the national, but which exist only as part of a whole. The Constitution of the United States is a unique document in history. It's a living document which has evolved over time in its amendments and in its interpretation. And today is something like its birthday. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.